Hello and thank you for joining Pookie, Lyra and myself for this service on Good Friday of Messy Church. I wonder how many times you get things wrong. I do it all the time and I expect Lyra does too. And I have to ask forgiveness, especially if I've done something that upsets somebody. Asking for forgiveness and being forgiven is what Easter is all about. And so for the next few minutes, we're going to think a little bit about the Easter story and how God loved us so much, he sent Jesus so that we could be forgiven forever. And so as we begin our time together, let's say a prayer. Lord, we thank you for our families. We thank you for our friends. And we thank you especially for your son, Jesus, who at this time of Easter showed us what it means to forgive and be forgiven. As we spend these next few moments together thinking about the Easter story, help us to be alert to your voice so that we might know more about you. Amen. Now, coming up on your screen is a list of things that I would like you to go and find. And in your, um, in your pack, Lara, if you want to get your thing out, it tells you all the things that I would like you to go and find. So, Lyra, why don't you go and get for us all those items that are on the list and they'll be coming up on your screen shortly. And I'm going to give you five minutes to do that.
I wonder how many items you got. Well, we'll think about that in a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to watch the Easter story now. And as we do, you've got some stickers and a card in your um, messy church pack. And as we go through the story, maybe you'd like to put your stickers on the card so that we have something to talk about when we finish. This is the most important story ever told. Although it's very sad at times, it's also the happiest story. That's because it's true. Jesus was a man who traveled around his country, Israel, 2000 years ago, teaching about God. Jesus knew God because God was his loving father. Jesus did incredible miracles like healing sick people, calming storms and feeding thousands of people from just five loaves of bread and two fish. That is amazing. Jesus promised people that God's king was coming and that his kingdom was free for everybody to enter. The crowds loved Jesus, but some religious leaders didn't like what he was teaching, especially his claim to be God. At this time, the people were ruled by the Romans who were often very nasty and forced everybody to pay lots of tax, which is money you have to pay to the government. Unsurprisingly, people didn't like the Romans and looked forward to the day when God's king would rescue them. Many people followed Jesus, including 12 men who were his close friends. They are known as his disciples. One spring, after teaching for three years, Jesus and his disciples went to the city of Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. Passover reminded the Jewish people how God cared for them a long time ago and how he had rescued them from slavery. Because it was a feast, there was a special meal to remember the agreement God had made with them when he rescued them. As Jesus and his disciples went to Jerusalem, there was a lot of excitement. It was also a time when people offered sacrifices to God in the temple because they believed that these paid the price for what they had done wrong. Everybody, including Jesus' disciples, hoped that he was the king they were waiting for. Jesus, however, had warned his disciples that it wasn't going to be like that, and that he was going to die and come back to life. The trouble was, they didn't understand him. So, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, he didn't ride in as a mighty king on an impressive horse as the people expected, but instead came on a gentle donkey. People cheered, but they were puzzled. The most important place in Jerusalem was the temple. It was an enormous building where sacrifices to God were made. At its very center was a special room sealed off by a great curtain. Now, although the people knew that God was everywhere, they believed that this room was somewhere very special. It was as though it was the place where God lived. It was such an important place that only one man was allowed to enter it, and then just once a year. Ordinary people, like you and me, weren't allowed to get anywhere near it. Not at all. The temple should have been treated with respect, but when Jesus went to see it, he found it had become like a marketplace. It was full of noisy animals and people selling things to the poor and cheating them. Jesus shouted, you've let God's house become the home of robbers and told some people to get out. They didn't like that. Over the next few days, Jesus taught in Jerusalem, but many of the religious leaders wanted to get rid of him. But getting rid of Jesus wasn't easy. He was popular and Jerusalem was crowded with visitors. Then one of Jesus' disciples, a man called Judas, came to the bad leaders. If you pay me money, he said, I'll show you how to catch Jesus. They agreed to his offer. The sacrifices for Passover were made on the Friday afternoon. The evening before that, Jesus held a special meal with his 12 disciples. He took bread and wine and told everybody that they were symbols of his death. Jesus also told his friends that he would be going away, but he would send them God's Holy Spirit. I'm going to make a new agreement between God and people, he said. His friends didn't understand what he meant. 
After the meal, Jesus went out with his friends to a quiet garden where he prayed about what was going to happen. As he finished praying, Judas arrived with soldiers to arrest him. Instead of staying with him, Jesus' friends ran away. Judas realized that he had made a terrible mistake, but by then it was too late. Early on the Friday morning, Jesus was brought in front of the religious leaders. They accused him of saying wrong things about God and of claiming to be God's king. Finally, Jesus told them that he was indeed God's king. That made the religious leaders angry and they sent Jesus to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, a man who had the power to put Jesus to death. Pontius Pilate soon decided that Jesus was innocent and should be set free. But the religious leaders and a crowd that had gathered demanded that Jesus be killed. The Roman punishment for their enemies was crucifixion, being nailed to a cross made from pieces of wood and left to die. Hoping that he could save Jesus from being crucified, Pilate had him beaten by the soldiers. It wasn't enough for the crowd. Crucify him, they shouted. In the end, Pilate ordered that Jesus should be put to death. Now the story gets as sad as any story can be. Jesus was taken away to a place where everybody could see him and he was nailed to a cross. Crowds gathered around the cross and people laughed and joked about Jesus in the cruelest way. Where were Jesus' disciples at this horrible time? Sadly, almost all of them had run away. But some of the women who had followed him stayed to watch what happened. As Jesus began to die, an awful darkness fell across the land. Day became night. It was as if Jesus was grabbing hold of every evil and horrible thing in the world and taking it into himself. Finally, Jesus died. As he did, the great curtain in the temple that separated the place where God lived from everybody else was ripped apart by some invisible force. It was a sign that Jesus had made a way to God for everybody. The sacrifices and the temple were never going to be needed again. As the sun began to set, Jesus' body was taken by a good religious leader and wrapped in cloth and taken to a private garden where he was put in a tomb that was like a cave. The tomb was closed by a big heavy stone. Meanwhile, Pontius Pilate ordered soldiers to stand guard around the tomb in case Jesus' body was stolen. Night fell. Saturday was a special day of rest when nothing was allowed to happen. It came and went. The women who followed Jesus knew that because everything had been so rushed, Jesus' body had not been properly prepared for the grave. So early on the Sunday morning, they returned to the tomb with the special spices needed for burial. But when they got there, they found, to their astonishment, that the soldiers had gone and the big heavy stone guarding the tomb had been rolled away. Looking inside, they saw that the body of Jesus was not there, but instead, neatly folded, was the cloth in which Jesus had been wrapped. It all made no sense. Then they saw an angel who told them that Jesus was no longer dead, but alive. The women ran back quickly to where Jesus' disciples were hiding and told them the news, but they found it very difficult to believe. That Easter Sunday, Jesus began appearing to his disciples and followers. At first, they found it hard to believe, but soon realised there could be no doubt that Jesus was really alive again. It was certainly Jesus because he still had the scars on his hands from being nailed to the cross. And he was really alive because they could talk to him, touch him and eat with him. It was very exciting news because Jesus had fought with death and defeated it. For 40 days, Jesus spoke with his disciples and followers. He turned up in rooms and on roads. He appeared to men and women and on one occasion to hundreds of people. During this time, Jesus explained to his followers that God's king needed to die in order to be the sacrifice for the wrong things that we have all done. But because he was innocent, death hadn't been able to keep hold of him. 
Jesus was now the king who could give eternal life to those who trusted him. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Jesus also told his followers that they were to share this good news about him with the whole world and that wherever they went, he would always be with them. He promised that one day he would come back from heaven to earth and make everything in the world new and right. Finally, Jesus met with his followers and told them it was time for him to return to heaven. With those words, he rose into the sky and disappeared from sight. Jesus is God's King and we can know him and know that he will be with us forever. Pray this prayer if you would like to know Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I ask you to forgive me for all the wrong things I have done and come into my life by your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your peace, your presence and your power. Thank you, King Jesus. Please reign over my life. Amen. We hope that you enjoyed watching that Easter story and enjoying putting the stickers on the card. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to think a little bit more about the things that you scavenged around the house and your garden and see if any of those things related to parts of the story. Well, the first one you had to find was a large leaf. I think this one's seen better days, hasn't it? But people, when they saw Jesus riding in on the donkey, it says in the story that they waved palms in the air and that leaf can maybe remind us about the waving of the palms in the story. And then you had to find something to eat. Did you find something to eat, Lyra? Oh, you found this. Oh, I thought, no, that was it. You found some cookies. And I hope you liked your cookies. And that's because in the story we heard how Jesus took some bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples telling them that this was a reminder of his body that would be broken for them. And then what did you have to find? Something to drink. And that's because in our story, you'll remember that Jesus also took a cup of wine and he shared it with his disciples saying, this is a reminder of my blood that is going to be shed for you. And then I asked you to see if you could find something from your garden. What did you find in the garden, Lyra? Oh, this pine cone. Well, the reason I asked you to find something in the garden was because in the story, we were reminded that Jesus went into the garden to pray. And what about something that cleans you? Hmm. What did you find? Ah, toothbrushes. Lyra found some toothbrushes. I wonder what you found. Well, in the story, we were told that Pilate washed his hands as he gave Jesus over to the crowds to be crucified. And then I asked you to find something wooden and Lyra's brought in part of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly the whole tree. Um, and that's because we read that Jesus was put upon a wooden cross. And then a stone. And if you remember, when Jesus was put in the grave, a stone was rolled over the entrance. And then, what else did we find? Something that smells nice. And you chose this flower. I don't think that smells at all, but it's very pretty. And that's because we're reminded that when the, the disciples, Mary, went down to the tomb early in the morning on Easter day, they took spices and things in order to put them on Jesus' body. And then I asked you to find something that makes you happy. And Lyra has chosen a bar of chocolate. And I think I would have chosen that too because chocolate makes me happy. And that's because on Easter Sunday, Jesus um, didn't stay inside the tomb. He rose from the grave and is alive. And so we can all say together, Jesus is alive. He is risen. So now we've done that, we're going to, um, we're going to open our little pack and see what else we've got inside. So Lyra, would you like to open your craft bag? We'll put the, I think we'll move the tree and pop it over there. Thank you, Fuki. And the toothbrushes and the leaves and the... And that. So let's pop that one over there. And so in your pack, you should have some felt-tip pens 
and a stained glass window. And you should have a key ring cross along with some threads and a needle. And that you can do some cross stitch and maybe either your mum, dad or, or carer can do that with you a little bit later on. And we've got an Easter card, which I think we're going to um, write to somebody. And is that, that's it, yeah. So I think what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll color in the stained glass window and we'll do our Easter card. So you can open your pens, Lyra, and we'll put those over there. So if you want to do that, we'll just be back in a few moments. Well, hopefully you have managed to fill in your stained glass window. Puki, Lyra and myself did this as a combined effort. So um, what you need to do now is to stick it up against a window um, and when the light shines on it, it should look really beautiful and remind you about the cross of Jesus and the forgiveness that he gives us through it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have our Easter card and we're going to write our Easter card to somebody either with our family or our friends and we can give that to them to celebrate this special time. So, Lara, who are you going to write your card to? Uh, Mum. You're going to write it to your mum, okay. So you write a nice Easter card to your mum. And you can spend some time later on maybe decorating your Easter card um, and colouring it in and making it look really special. And then you can pop it in your envelope and then you can give that to whoever it is you've decorated it for. That's wonderful. Okay, now we've finished with our craft for the time being, we're going to watch another little video, this time from Poppet the Puppet. Hi everyone, Poppet the Puppet here. I'm the teenage superstar, and today I'm finding out all about Easter. I was eating a hot cross bun the other day, yum, 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 and I noticed it had a cross on the top. Crosses are found a lot when we think about Easter. They're a massive Easter symbol. Have a look round your house and see if you can find anything with a cross on it. I got a card the other day from my friend, Harry Jotter. It had lots of crosses on it. Do you know what that means? It means that Harry is sending me lots of love. Yes, love. We see crosses when we think about love. It can help us to remember that Jesus loves us. What a special message. My teacher must really love me because when I saw my maths test and puppets are not very good at maths, it was full of kisses. Mm, lots and lots of kisses all over the page. Look, is that right? No, it's not. It doesn't mean she's sending kisses. It means I got the sums wrong. Oh dear. And sometimes it can remind us that we make mistakes. We get things wrong. Nobody is perfect. Not even me. So we can remember that God loves us, but we all make mistakes. So, that leads us to the third kind of cross you might see. It's an Easter cross. You might see one outside a church or round someone's neck on a chain or even on a hot cross bun. Mmm, yummy. 
it can remind us that Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday and also it can help us to think about the other two crosses. So why did Jesus die? Well, it's because he loves us and because even when we make mistakes, he wants to be friends with us and find a way for us to be friends with God. So he died in our place so we can be forgiven for all the things we do wrong. And the great news is that Jesus didn't just die, but on Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead. Yay! We can celebrate that this Easter. So, when we eat our Easter eggs and we think of the first Easter, it can remind us of an empty tomb, that Jesus rose again, that Jesus loves us, that he loves us even when we make mistakes and he died to make a way for us to be friends with God. Have a super Easter and I hope to see you soon. Bye! Easter is such a happy occasion and now we're going to listen to a really happy song and the words are going to come up on your screen and so maybe you'd like to join in with this happy Easter song. Christ the Lord has Now, I'm sure you're all wondering whether or not you can start your Easter egg. Well, you're not really meant to until Easter Sunday, but because it's messy church, we can. And so if you'd like to open up your box of Easter egg, that's it, because this, uh, we're gonna use this as part of our prayer time together. So we're gonna open up our Easter egg like that, and we're gonna just put it there like this. So as we unwrap our Easter egg, we're going to start to say thank you to God for all the wonderful things that he gives us in our lives. And so as we open it up, and you might at home like to say thank you to God for something. And so I'm going to say thank you, God, for all my wonderful family and friends. Who are you going to say thank you to God for, Lyra? Uh, thank you, um, Mum, for everything that she does. That's wonderful. 
And then we're going to open our egg. Now, oh, I've got a little hole in the top of mine. So as we open our egg, well, there's actually Smarties inside here. But the reason we have an Easter egg is to remind us of Jesus' tomb. And when you just give it a bash, that's it. That's it. So we have an Easter egg to remind us of the tomb of Jesus and that on that first Easter Sunday, the tomb was empty. So as we break our Easter egg up, we're going to think about some of the things that we know that are broken in the world. And that can be all sorts of things. People who are hungry, people who don't have somewhere to live, people who are poorly. And we're going to ask God to look after and bless all those people. And now, the oh, you've broken yours up into lots of bits. And now the best bit, I think, is to eat our chocolate. And as we eat our Easter egg, we're going to say thank you to God for all those people that we love and who love us and bring us sweetness in our lives. And you're desperate to eat yours, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so I really hope that you enjoy eating your Easter egg. And that comes as a gift from everybody at St. James in Middlesdown and St. Mary's here in Sanderstead. Now. <laughs> so as we come to the end of our time together, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer, which you'll find on the piece of paper in your pack. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God bless you and all your family this Easter.